So the rear axle is removed now. And we get the first look at the floor. We've got the oil there, which is coming from the diff leak. A little bit of corrosion on some brackets and there's that corroded brake line. Uh, so left front mount, no great problems there at the moment. There'll probably be a semicircular crack around the mounting pin when we take the bolt out. Right front mount, definitely cracked. Got the spot weld failed underneath the bush. And then a crack coming out, going up the vertical section and a crack going towards the front of the car. A couple of spot welds that are showing signs of movement and what looks like a crack uh, between the mountain pin and going across to the spot weld. That one needs looking into obviously and repairing. Uh, we haven't seen anything obvious yet on the right rear until we start degreasing and taking all this off. And then the left rear we've got the common hairline crack going up the vertical section there. A couple of spot welds which are showing signs of movement. And the spot weld failure in that corner up there. There's also a split in this seam going horizontally but also then another split going vertically from another spot weld on the inside edge. Clear crack around that spot weld and going up into the panel. Uh, early signs of spot weld failure on this chassis leg section over here. A couple of black circular marks which I'm going to take the seam sealer off to see if these are broken or breaking. Um, what else we got? Anything nasty? Possibly one looks does look like one actually. One spot, spot weld failed there because it's been there for a while because it's corroded and there's a clear circle, perfect circle, which I suppose it suggests it's a, a spot weld failure. So we need to take the sealer off in that area. So the next stage is fuel tank out and then we can start degreasing the, uh, the floor. Now we've got the rear axle out, we can see a better picture of these subframe bushes I'll tell you about. So clear breakage up here where the aluminium's corroded and pushed the, the rubber away and then a bit of separation around the central pin as well. That's one of the rear bushes and then the right front bush is pretty poor as well. Lots of separation in between the aluminium sleeve of the bush, this piece in here, to then the rubber which is uh, unbonding, it's pushing itself away due to corrosion and this rusty patch up here is where the bush has been pressing on that spot weld on the front right mount and which is what's caused the breakage on that spot weld. Um, so yeah, definitely going to recommend a pair or a set of four subframe brushes as well. So now the axle's out, we can see that oil leak from the front of the diff a lot clearer now, which has been spreading over this, uh, this bush. This is the only bush on the front of the diff that holds it and it's got a big job to do. This is an M14 bolt and 200 newton meters and there's nothing on the other side so that one single fixing bush and bolt is what's stopping that diff torsionally twist when you apply the throttle and that bush is made out of some sort of compressed foam and it is expanding at the bottom there and also at the top there's cracks and gaps which may be suggesting it's just old or it might be that the oil contamination has uh, sped that failure up but I'd also advise a bush for the front of the diff. So fuel tanks out now and that's the first look at the floor. Uh, before we start our degreasing process. So we've got all this oil and uh, general dirt and grime to clean off before we can start identifying the cracks and make sure nothing's missed. When you look at small little areas like that, you can tell there's a crack there, spot weld failure up behind there, so all this needs to be cleaned off to check properly. But all in all, not too corroded, pretty good. Little bits of surface corrosion on the ends of brackets but not too bad. We degreased the floor really thoroughly now. Something that's fairly straightforward and standard, yet I think we're the only company that really do it to this detail. Just to make sure we're not gonna miss anything, so we can check for cracks and indentations in the sealer, which might suggest spot weld failures, exactly like that one there. Whereas before that was a little bit of an unknown. Now it's quite clear that's failed. And before in the video, that was a definite, that failure there. And so was that crack there. Yeah, that spot weld wasn't visible because of the dirt. And now look, with the dirt gone, it's clear that the spot weld is cracked and the panel separated. And the same with a bit more confirmation on this rear chassis leg, that there's something going on on these two here. So that's the panel degreased. 
And that's the look at the left front plate, the underside of it. A semicircular crack around the mounting point. A couple of little flexes on the spot welds. Right front, which has definitely got some damage. Good crack going all the way through the, the horizontal section. If you're looking at it like that. And also at the vertical. And then a couple of cracks coming in. And then definitely going around the mountain pin in the middle and then various spot welds that have shown signs of flex. Uh, right rear, got a little bit what looks like something around that spot weld. Yeah, that is a crack. Yeah, again, before cleaning the grease off, there was nothing there. And notice we haven't used a wire wheel or grinder to do this. A lot of people don't worry about the, the dirt and just go straight in with the wire wheel of a grinder. All you're doing there is smudging the cracks and because they're hair lines, sometimes they'll be, the ends will be so smudged and thin, you won't be able to actually see where they are and then you'll be stop drilling uh, the wrong part of the crack. So taking all the dirt off first is paramount to actually making sure that you find these cracks and stop them. And then on the other side, the left rear corner, now the, gre uh, the dirt is off, that crack has clearly grown a lot further, or not grown, but it's, it's obvious it's further than it was when it was just dirty all around this area. And then possible spot weld movement in that area there underneath the sealer. Um, and quite a good sealer split all the way from here, all the way down up to about here, where it then joins up and goes vertical up on the inside slope. So this is exactly why you should clean and degrease the floor thoroughly. What we thought earlier looked like a fairly good mount, a right rear mount. We haven't taken any seam sealer off yet. All we've done is clean the panel. And when you zoom right in, really hard to pick up, but there is a hairline crack. Lost it myself now. About here, going up through that sort of area, through the seam sealer. So we'll lightly take that sealer off, see if we can find the ends of that crack. Might even need to heat it up or even die pen it, and then stop drill it. So that's the left front mount, part way through the uh, removal of the crack problem and uh, drilling out of a spot weld. So two spot welds that had uh, shown signs of flex moving and proving that there was a semicircle crack around this center point as we then drilled three spot welds or eight mil spot weld drill bits and then also made an incision on just on this outer side which then the piece of metal in the middle has fallen out and you can that's proved by the fact that I don't know of any machine that can cut a circle like that so that circle was a crack. So that's the left one and now we can fill that channel up which is a good way of connecting the inside platform which is the bit that you want to make keep still which is where the thread is to this outer panel. And lots of people just weld over the cracks but that's not actually penetrating into the internal thread so we've exposed that platform so we can join the two together. There's the right front mount part way through so there's multiple cracks in this one. Little section fell out there and you can see that platform behind it which is what I'm talking about. Uh, there was only one spot weld left that's any good, that one over there. But once I finish those, I probably will remove that one as well. Not taking it out yet, just in case the, the platform tries to move. Uh, so holes are stock drilled at the end of the cracks and then big access ones drilled out and the depth in there, which is where I can get good plug weld penetration from the inside platform to the outer panel. And again, crack down the inside and then going up to the outside. And then on the left rear mount, that one needs to stop drill one more time. As you see, once I've taken the sealer off, you can see that the crack was further past than where I initially thought. So I'll stop drill that one again, further on. Nice crack there. And there's definite starting of a crack around this spot weld and possibly some early movement around that one. So we'll just get these welded up now. That's part way through the crack repair on the right front plate and lots of people just think it's obviously just welding over cracks but as you can see we've made positive connections from the internal platform where the threaded mount is to the outer skin which is the one that's cracked and as you can see we haven't even yet covered over or well repaired the actual main crack this is just the extra work that we do from the knowledge of how we can improve the connection between the inner and outer panels and now we'll go on to actually repair the crack itself the left rear cracks uh, flush down is uh, as little as we can do. We'd like to keep it all there because obviously the thicker the weld, the stronger it is, but we have to take some off so we can get our plates flush or flat. There is a natural curve to the floor on this fold, which is why they crack down that fold. 
so that is a perfect on that hinge of the plate where it folds down to go over to here we can leave it a little bit higher and we know it's still um, as flush as it will ever get on the plates there's the right front still need to, need to drill one more out there and replace that and that's the left front we haven't touched that yet apart from cleaning it that's what they look like uh, pre-welding sorry pre-grinding so working on this right rear one this is uh, ultimately the hardest one because the cracks are so minute on this side normally they're secondary ones uh, compared to the left rear side that they take ages to find so I think we've got something in the corner there which we're gonna have to heat the panel to see we think we've also got something tracing up here because there was a direct line underneath the sealer uh, we've got a definite crack around the outside of that spot weld up there which is going into the boot cavity the hidden cavity and also we might have a crack in this corner as well there's an interesting sort of black mark in the sealer before I've removed all of the sealer. So I'm going to take some more off and see if there is any crack under there. So a couple more cracks we found on this left rear plate in the corner. Got this look, looks like a little crack going out of that spot weld heading up towards that folded arch. And then we've got another out of this MIG weld here. Got a little bit of a crack coming out the edge of that and the panel that's the actual spring platform and all these are obviously microscopic little hairline cracks and if they're left or missed then there's risk that they're going to grow over the years obviously it'll all be slower paced because these main cracks are welded along with reinforcement plates to, to reinforce the the mounting points but yet the edges of the panel are still suffering from cracks and that's the risk of uh, where the panel starts pulling itself off of the floor so we'll address those as well stop drill those and then weld those over and then we knew we had one up there fell spot weld there and then just taking some cedar off here and we've got what looks like a definite spot weld failure because of the corrosion in that that was all under the sealer so how moisture's got in there not quite sure maybe from the boot side but that's going to need some also investigating so there is some spider cracks in the panel coming outside of that spot weld there in the center of the picture now at least three uh, little hairline cracks which will need locating at the ends and stop drilling and then also you can see that there is rust this was all underneath the sealer couldn't see any rust earlier and then just one quick swipe of this seam sealer and you can see rust coming out of this spot weld which will also suggest that this spot weld has got a crack around the outside I've started center punching some of the uh, little hairline cracks coming out of that spot weld this one's opened up and I've center punched it to uh, locate the drill to drill them out. Little one come out of that spot weld there. And also we've got quite a few in these corners. So the panel is splitting around this spot weld, if I can get the light on it correctly. And there's a few cracks coming out of that and it's a bit more apparent on this other side. This is the right front side. There's a good split on the left hand side of that spot weld which I've now centre punched and we'll drill these out and replace these. So these ones up here next to the spring turret, these in a line here, that one there needs replacing which is outside of the plated area um, and then on the other side uh, that one needs replacing, that one needs replacing, that one, that one those two, three all right and that one there needs replacing. So that's why we're going to need to take some sound deadening pads and seam sealer off in this corner so that we can carry out some stitch welding along there and make sure that panel is secure to the rest of the panels in the car. So I've got most of the broken spot welds drilled out there and uh, taking advantage of the panel being behind it so we don't need to use a two mil spot weld drill bit into an open cavity because there's one behind it we can use an eight mil get more material out which means we can make a more of a positive connection between the two panels we can start plug welding the top one and then filter it down into the lower panel here which is cracked and then just taking a little bit off of the uh, chassis legs at the bottom and we've definitely got some cracks coming out around that one which we need to stop. I think we had a slight bit coming around that spot weld and I think there was one on the other side there and that one there, that black jagged line around the edge is suggesting a crack around that spot weld there. Um, these two aren't too bad this side because that's straight into the boot. These ones here are in the other side of the boot uh, where all the modules are and are a lot harder to access. We need to take some seam sealer off behind there to make a positive 
penetration for the weld so that the seam sealer doesn't drop into it but also uh, if we weren't to do that then there's bound to be moisture trap underneath or sealer burnt which then could be uh, a corrosion risk in the future. So looking from this angle at the floor you get an idea uh, how much the floors have separated. It's probably two, at least two millimeters, that's, a, that's an eight mil circle so I'd say at least two millimeters there separation and then going down towards the front the separation reduces probably less than a millimeter there and then interestingly on this right rear the one that's really hard to find faults on i'm really pleased because we have found a crack there something that wasn't i was even doubting myself whether there was something and various amounts of gentle center punches around that area have proved that a crack is there and it's opened up quite nicely so we've center punched the ends and found the ends of it we'll stop drill them weld it which will repair the both sides of the of the crack so it'll hold the metal together and then it'll have a reinforcement plate over this area anyway so that's why I don't mind center punch in that area it looks like it's being damaged but it's the only way sometimes to find it relatively quickly and then the plate will cover all this area anyway so it will all be good so we made sure that we've got all the cracks so we're inside the car now and the only thing that suggests there might be an issue is a very small crack in the sealer just going along here. So we're gonna take this off and have a look. So I've got some of the seam sealer off and there's a definite spot weld breakage here. Going around the spot weld to out to the edge of the panel. A little bit of a breakage around this one and also a tiny bit of floor drop in this corner up here. So the sealer is great up here. I haven't yet taken any sealer off and it's already got a good split where the floor has dropped away just about, well, a couple of millimeters in this area up here. You might be able to see a bit closer now. So the joined edge is perfect in there. The sealer is covering the gap. There is no gap because the panels are touching. And as we move along and the spot welds have been failing, there's corrosion in the panel gap. And the panel gap has a natural gap of at least two to three millimeters. So that circle, that hole you can see in there is where I drilled out underneath. That was one of the spot welds that had failed. And this is where we're gonna be doing um, the stitch welding to make sure this rear axle carrier panel is fully attached to the other surrounding panels, the boot panel and the chassis legs. Yeah, so that's a definite worthwhile exercise because the two MIG welds, now we've cut open our access panel, one MIG weld there, clearly cracked down the side, coming off the panel, going up there and also across there. That MIG weld we haven't seen yet because it's covered in dirt. And then going over to the driver's side, there's a little bit of a bigger one. There's a MIG weld in there and it's got a crack coming down the panel and also another one going up there and starting to travel up to the edge of that panel. That MIG weld there has also got a crack, what looks like going through it, and possibly another one coming down the bottom and going up through that way as well. So we've cut the left rear open, we're going to pick this panel because we're going to use that. And that's a look inside the cavity. These three MIG welds at the top and the T-piece are all fine. Uh, definitely worthwhile taking this cover off because there's a spot weld there that we'd never be able to get to. This panel is broken. That one's good, that one's broken. You can also see the gap in this corner up here now compared to further up the panel where this rear axle carry panel is dropping slightly. And then the issue was this spot weld. I haven't yet cleaned it, but there's a spot weld in there and a crack going up the panel heading for this MIG weld. So that's the one that we've uh, had to cut open this access panel to repair. So clean this corner up a little bit more. And now you can I say clearly see it, it's still a very tiny crack, but it is definitely there. Heading up to that MIG weld, and that's all internal inside the box, well, on the box section of the rear axle carrier panel, inside the cabin in the boot. That's why we've had to take out that access panel to be able to get to it. So I've stopped drilled the end of the crack and also drilled out the broken spot weld, and we're gonna weld repair them now. Lots of cracks on this one, tiny little hairline cracks. Absolutely, it's very, very small in size. There's the left MIG weld, two cracks going across that. Uh, let's try and point to them. One over here going through there, another one up here going that way. And then the right MIG weld, we've got a crack up here coming down this side of the MIG weld down here and also another little one branching off that side and then on the passenger side got the MIG weld here tiny little crack going out there coming down the side of that MIG weld and coming out down the bottom 
and on the other one we've got it going across the top of the MIG weld. Look at that for a factory MIG weld, how much of that gap of the panel, which they cut out for welding, didn't get welded. Gaps down that side, but massive gap down that side. So very, well half of the width is only connected by a MIG weld and probably why, partly why it's uh, got a crack going through the top section of it. So the stop drills highlight the extent of the damage a bit more and show you where the cracks were. And it's worth bearing in mind that those stop drills are two millimeters, two millimeter wide drill bit. So the hairline crack is literally just a hair, easily missed. And you imagine if you'd plated the car underneath and then carry on driving years, thinking, yeah, my car's reinforced, got great plates underneath. Yeah, you've got this inside the cabin, festering away, probably progressing at a slower rate because of plates underneath, but still will progress. And then you're only gonna have more problems in the future. So better to get it all out of the way whilst the axle and the fuel tank are out, take the interior out, do the job properly and resolve all the cracks. We estimate that about seven out of 10 E46s that we see have this extra damage inside the cavities. That's why it's important to locate, stop, drill, the cracks, the ends of the cracks before you start cleaning any sort of metal because they're so fine and so small that they can just be smudged into the metal grain and then you miss the ends of the crack. So some of the central ones in this bright light you can hardly see now. Uh, so that shows we've removed the MIG welds so we're not just welding over the top of the cracked MIG welds, they're actually the problem. So we're actually taking them out and now we've got down to the layer below which is the threaded mount and then we're going to replace those MIG welds with our own MIG welds and be guaranteed to make a, a better positive connection between the two pieces. There's the new MIG welds and also the crack repair and that's now painted in etch primer and then high build primer as well. And this spot weld's repaired up here and also the plug weld and stitch weld pulse weld coming up the panel and painted in etch primer then high build primer. There's a few stitch welds on the driver's side holding the rear axle carrier panel to the seat panel then in the left of the picture uh, the chassis legs in the centre of the picture and a bit of the boot floor in the corner up um, toward the right. We've got our front access panel shaped and welded on so they just stitch on to cover the access panels that we cut open earlier and then this side the passenger side is all prepped ready for some stitch welding and ready for the cover plate to be welded back on over the uh, boot floor panel back there so we're going to do some stitch welding you can see the natural drop of the floor here against the chassis leg the floor is nice and tight and touching and then it starts to gap open here up until the corner when it's got about a two mil around about a two mil drop there. We've got our left panel stitched back in or um, tack welded back in place now and stitch welding throughout the rear axle carrier panel up in the distance. So that's the underside of the car looking up showing a, uh, a good idea of how these panels were held together before. Originally by spot welds, these little indents here and these ones were all okay and then we had some that had failed which we drilled out and we're going to do a plug weld now going upwards against gravity but what I want to show you is the stitch welds here these are the penetrations of the stitch welds that we've just done inside the car that have come down through to show good connection between this rear axle carrier panel and the chassis leg in the car so we stop drilled that other little crack in there and put a nice little stitch weld holding the spring turret spring perch to the uh, rear axle carrier panel just replace the two broken spot welds with nice really flat plug welds and that's what it looks like before and you see that crack going through into the rear axle carrier panel stop drill that stop drilling every single crack and then removing the uh, broken spot weld before we replace them with a mig weld and you can see they've got good penetration they've come through to the second panel which is exactly what we want so that's all the plug welds complete now uh, we still need to flatten those down um, before we start the reinforcement plate work. Notice there's no reinforcement plates on there yet. That car now is what we call crack free and now the reinforcements can start. So with the initial assessment and then the strip down of the underneath, the interior strip out and store and the full degrease and then all this crack repair work and identification work and seam sealer sound pad removal and all the extra work inside the cabin uh, we're up to about 20 hours now on this particular vehicle each vehicle is different some don't need the inside work but this particular one we're at about 20 hours and that's not over the course of a week or something that is 20 hours 
not non-stop because we have to go home and sleep, but you know what I mean, that is 20 hours added up um, for the process for one person. So just put that into perspective even before the reinforcement plates start. Here's the Reedish Motorsport V2 reinforcement plates for the E46 rear axle carrier panel. And that's painted through on the back with weld through primer. And the body is also painted with weld through primer, so there's no chance of any bare metal products being, um, being left. That's the left rear plate reinforced around the perimeter. And we make positive connections. We drill out the centers of our holes and underneath to allow us to make a plug weld connection straight into the threaded receiver, then into the outer panel, and then into our reinforcement plate. So a three layer connection, which is what we're about to do now. We're ready to do the paint application. The color application on this E46 M3 is Mystic Blue, which I think was A07 on the card. Proper automotive paints. And here's the underside of the car, the rear axle carrier panel in its high build color, which is uh, like a matte black finish, what you're seeing now. Um, and now we are ready for the pink colour application. That's the paint colour application applied now, Mystic Blue, A07. And the textured seam sealer finish. It's blended out into the wheel arches. Customers have asked us to remove a bit of corrosion on their top rear turrets by the shock absorbers mount. So we've done that on both sides. I'll see all this is fully degreased first and good paint addition so it's super durable really strong you can scratch this stones can hit it it's uh, it's very durable indeed this week's C46 suffering repair in mystic blue body color there's the two diff seals output seals for the left and right of the rear differential Here's the ball joints for the trailing arm. Uh, initially it was just the lower two that we were going to be doing because they were seized all through the camber bolts and through the camber arms. But we also found play, once we took the uh, trailing arms off, we found play, which is excessive movement or like a little knock, in the two upper spring arms that go on the aluminium arms. So we're going to replace all four of those whilst we've got the trailing arms apart. So we've got the new ball joints in, all four of them, two lowers, two tops. Uh, we did also need to put two arms on there, these aren't much money, we put some used ones, good ones we had in stock, because uh, there's the remnants of the four ball joints and as you can see the reason why we are changing them is because the camber adjustment bolts were totally seized to the inner sleeves of the ball joint, hence this one, this one was totally dead, we had to cut through it because it couldn't come out with the special tool to remove those. So one arm we tried to cut the ball, uh, the head off and it, obviously we knew we were going to end up having to damage the arm which that one did so that's no good and this one was totally seized so we just cut through that one simply so a pair of new lower arms but they're not much money so it's like 15 pounds each and there's the new steering staff joint there with the rubber in there which is the one that's got the little bit of uh, excessive play we've changed that shortly the rebuild is fully underway now got the fuel tank in and the brake pipes in. We painted the brake pipes because they were good enough to reuse. Slight amount of corrosion that we took off and then we've waxed them as well with a transparent wax coat. So they'll be good for years to come. Customer took away his axle and painted his diff carrier, his diff, upper arms, trailing arms, um, and then we've brought it, you know, it's brought it back here and then we've uh, assembled it with new bushes for the subframe and for the trailing arm. Uh, diff front bush as well, a few other things, lower board joints, upper board joints, replacement lower camber arms, used ones because the other ones were seized, eye back spring kit for the rear, 
Um, you can see the floor colouring, it's lovely mystic blue up there. Contrasting nicely against the yellow power flex bushes, right out into the arches as well. And we're just going to continue now and put the rest of the under trays on and in the exhaust system. So I've replaced the sound deadening pads now on the um, on the rear axle carrier panel. Left rear up there, blended in nicely to the original panel. Replace the ones down the front of the seat area where we've done and the one on the right hand side as well. You can just see the covering panel there that we welded back on after cutting it open to access the cracks inside that left rear cavity. And now the boot's been vacuumed out and also panel wiped and degreased, ready for the next stage which is a little bit of pink colour. So the body colour paint's now finished curing and we're ready to start putting this uh, car back together on the inside. Looking nice inside. There's our reinforcement plates or cover plates as they will be where we have to cut open the access panels to weld the internal threaded mounts. And there's another one over there and we've replaced the sound deadening pads where we did the stitch welding all down the side of the panel, both sides. And um, we'll update a little bit more once we've got some more interior trims in. There is with more trims fitted up, body colour um, Mystic Blue, looks nice against all the other trims. And then just before the back seats go in, you hardly see anything in the repair now, but everything goes back in in the original way, so uh, the customer wouldn't realise that so much invasive work's happened and it all looks factory and no damage to any components. Uh, but if then people go looking in for the repair, you can see that it's been done underneath once you take some trims off and it's been done to a high standard. And we replace all the grommets as well, so grommets are back in, they're not overpainted all in the correct way and you've got that nice textured finish on the floor and body colour paint and you can just see the outline of the cut there where we open this panel up and then we've welded it back on and that was to get to the cracks inside here in the cavities so if you see that on your car then you've had a repair in that area. Time for the vehicle clean outside, snow foam wash first. Now the snow foam wash is done, we've done an iron X just to make sure there's no contaminants on the car before it gets handed back and you see it's picking out little bits of uh, sort of atmospheric fallout, which all cars have, and we're just getting rid of that before we start any of the actual wash process. It's just been washed with the two bucket method, and now a new waffle weave drying towel. Just going to wash that off, dry that off. Engine bay's had a little clean up, just whilst we're vacuuming the rest of the inside of the car. There it is, repair finished, 14 mile road test, and vehicle cleaned, and the uh, customer's here to collect now. Eh?